Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome to another Pi Game tutorial video. In this video, what we're going to be doing is kind of repairing our crash sequence. So we now know how to make these cool fancy buttons, so now we want to use the cool fancy buttons. And we got a nice pause and we can continue and all that, but the crash is still ugly. It's got this like forced wait period and it's just nasty. So we want to fix that next. So it just so happens we have a crash function. So what we can do is we can take the exact same functionality and idea of these paused sequence and we can transfer that to crashed. Before we get there though, I do just want to say that there are two methods for pausing things, of course. One is the method we're using where it clears the screen and we don't see anything anymore. And then the other is like our crash sequence where it says you crash but it does not wipe out uh, the current score. So we hit P for pause, but we see it cleared everything. We don't see the car anymore, and we don't see the block. And that's okay in some respects. Like if you're playing Tetris, it's kind of cheating to press pause and then think for a minute, like, okay, what I need to do is put this object here and so on. And this game isn't quite the same. I mean, you could cheat a little bit like that. Um, but I will just show you guys, obviously, like with pause, um, to change the... Uh, the way that works, instead of uh, filling the display with white all over again, you could just choose to not fill white. I mean, that's completely fine. Um, and what you could do is <clears throat> you'll notice that if we run this um, and we hit go and we pause, that really quickly, like, it, it's not, it doesn't look horrible, but it's a little grainy. Um, so ideally, because it's just like pasting, pause, 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 right over itself over and over and over. Um, so obviously that might be like a little messy for, for some folks, but um, so there's obviously a couple things you could do there. Um, first of all, you, you know, the buttons, I, you would kind of want to leave the buttons there because um, they are the reactive buttons, but you could at least move all of this, right? You could just cut and then basically paste right up here and then shift this over with a control opening brackets save and run and now when you pause it's not it's going to keep pasting these buttons for sure um, but that's not as big of a deal because well how is the button actually drawn <clears throat> the way the button is drawn is first we draw a rectangle then we put the text on top so in reality, these little surfaces of our buttons are constantly being uh, overwritten. So that's why the text on our buttons doesn't do the same thing that our text here had done because it's actually is being cleared um, just because of the button being re redrawn every time. So uh, just keep that kind of stuff in mind. But anyway, so that's our pause function. <laughs> and now let's actually talk about uh, what we we're gonna talk about here and that is the crash function. So the crash function can be very much, sorry, I got such an itchy back. <laughs> um, basically this exact function. So once again, we will just copy this function, copy, and we're gonna go up to crash now. And instead of message display, you crashed and suck, we'll just paste this. Instead of paused, it's you crashed. And uh, we'll say crash, equals true, okay, while crash, um, oh, you know what, well, we have to um, take crash, and we need to put that to the top, so where did we put pause, here it is, so paste crash equals, um, actually, you know what, we don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. So let's get out of that real quick. Uh, and the crashed function, actually, we can just do while true. Aha, programming. I win, probably. Anyway, you crashed while true. We run these events. Simple enough. Now, this will say play again. Again, we might run over that button, so we might have to make the button bigger, but that is okay. You play again, quit. Instead of unpause, the play again event is actually uh, game loop, game underscore loop. So hopefully we can get away with this, game underscore loop. 
And... True. I think we'll get away with that. That's not exactly the best coding in the world because you'll always be within this loop, but uh, yeah. <laughs> We could we could keep a global. This I, I mean, it won't, I don't think should shouldn't result in a true memory leak uh, with Python. Uh, if this was a, if Python was a more uh, sophisticated language, that might be a problem, but it's not. So we'll run this again and let's see if we can get away with this. So let's go ahead and crash into something. Okay, looks good so far. And we hit play again, and we get to play again. Awesome. So easy enough. Uh, we never lose sight of the buttons because those are drawn last. And we get our score. We can still see that. So that's pretty neat. Um, yeah. So now we've got a proper looking game over functionality with quit buttons instead of having them press keys and forcing them to play again and all this nonsense. Um, so the game is, is uh, looking a little, more, a little bit more respectable now. So now uh, the next thing I want to do, and I'll just save it for the next video, is we want to, um, since this is our game, we don't really, you know, we, we changed the title of the window, but this is a race game, not, uh, you know, this is a little, I don't know, a really grainy looking snake. <laughs> so the next thing I want to show uh, is how we can change up that icon. So that's what we'll do in the next video, so stay tuned for that. If you guys have any questions or comments on this video, please feel free to leave them below. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for all the support and subscriptions, and until next time.